we have a member of the family. The Reverend Dr. Henry Hardy is no stranger to Christ Universal Temple. He just recently retired from the pastorate after, I believe, close to 50 years. After close to 50 years, if nobody else will clap for that, I will. I'm, listen, four years feels like an eternity. <laughs> For 40 plus, good Lord, the Lord must have been with him. <laughs> he, he was the pastor at Cosmopolitan Community Church. He continues to serve. He has been through the, the intensive training program, what used to be known as the intensive teacher training program right here at CUT through JCI. He knows us, we know him. He's our brother, he's our family. He belongs to us. I'm happy to present to some of you and to introduce to others of you the Reverend Dr. Henry Hardy. Come now with me into the presence, into the power, the prestige, the eminence of him who is Lord of life, the master mentality who articulates an ethic for excellence. He is the portrait of purpose. He is the way sure. He is Jesus the Christ. So speak now to us, brood over us, Take the rude rudiments of our lives and shape us from the roughness into the glory and grandeur of your message and meaning for us. It is in your name and majesty that we pray. It is so, and so it is. We've come today to celebrate the depth and the dimension, the essence and the excellence, the power and the purpose of legacy. Talk about love. I asked Derek, what does that mean to talk about the power of love and celebrating now heritage, to weave them together into this seamless robe? And I thought about love because love is the executive principle. Love is that which galvanizes and energizes our being in the world. And so when we talk about love, John 4.16 says, God is love. And because he says that, we need not just to rehearse it, but we need to understand it and impregnate it with a sensibility and stand intransitively before that message. God is love. And if God is love, then love is God. So wherever you see the word love, put God. Wherever you see God, put love, because they are coterminous. They exist together. And God so loved the world that he sent his son. Hallmark, not Hallmark, God didn't send Raphael, did not send Michael, did not send Gabriel, but God sent his son into the world to exemplify for us to demonstrate the divinity and to be a portrait of purpose. God sent his son into the world to show love, to be love, to demonstrate love. For when we talk about love, it's not an intellectualized concept. You don't talk love, you walk love. You don't preach about love, you do love. Love becomes an existential embodiment of the excellence and the purpose of Jesus the Christ. And so we are here today to talk about this power of love. Love is the more excellent way. Khalid Gibran says, what is it to love? But it is to know the pain of too much tenderness. He said, it is to melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night. What is love? Love is to wake at morning with a heart full of it. What is it love to rest at noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy? What is love? Love is not just about your being here, but love is about your being here with purpose. 
What is love? Do you live on purpose? And so I'm here to say to you today that Jenny Coleman, this queen on the quest, this marvelous, majestic matron, this powerful, prestigious personality, through her vision and her vivacity, she created for us, through the Jesus teachings, this cathedral of consciousness, this sanctuary of sensibility, that they said it could not be done. But Jenny Coleman loved it enough to effectuate and to exemplify the essence of what it means when you love something with passion. For love is passion. Love is conscious commitment to being and doing the best that you can become. What is it? Because what did Marvin Sapp say? That, that they did the best, they saw the best in me when others did not see anything in us. Anita Baker says, it's giving you the best that I got. And so if you're going to love me, love me out of the depth, love me out of the dimension, out of the truth, out of your resonance reality, love me. Don't just pity pat me, love me. Don't just talk about it, but love me that I feel something on the inside. I want to be loved so much. I want my liver to quiver. I want to be loved so much that I want to feel that I'm elevated up. I'm moving above the mess of life. I want my love all over me that will keep me alive. And I said early on, I said early on that God is love. I said early on, we celebrate black heritage. I said early on because God sent his son. And guess what this thing in love is all about? Because it means that God sent the best that he had. And the best that he had was to go about doing good. You need to understand doing good. That is an ethically intensive statement to do good, not bad. Not ignorance, not foolishness, not crap, but to do good. And Jesus went about doing good. Doing good, galvanized, energized by love. For it was love that was the motive thrust. It was love that sent Jesus into the teeming midst of humanity. It was love that had Jesus invade the leper colonies. It was love that had Jesus reach out and touch a woman and say, Woman, thou art loosed. It was love that enabled Jesus to go forward and reach down and get a man and say, Do you want to be made whole? It was love that generated this powerful perspective on life. And Jesus tells us then, ought to love ye one another. He said, Lord, who is my family? Who doeth my will? If you love me, keep my commandments. What are my commandments? That you touch in tenderness, that you hold in hope, that you share in sublimity. What is love? Love is richness and love is relevance. What is love? Love is the power in this hour. It is the scope to cope. It is the will to climb the hill. It is the zeal to fill the bill. It is the zest to be the best. What is love? Love is triumphant reality percolating in our lives. And so when we see Jesus doing what he did, Jesus was exemplifying love because Jesus could not live without love. Tell your neighbor, Jesus couldn't live without love. Love for Jesus is the infrastructure of the gospel. Love means it is a framework upon which he walked. And without love, Jesus would have been asphyxiated. Without love, Jesus could not have demonstrated because love is a vital engine that drove Jesus into the midst of humanity. And so when we talk about love then, it's about the love reality that it sets up a framework. Tell your neighbor, love is infrastructure. It is the infrastructure of consciousness. It means that we walk on it, we talk about it. It is a platform of purpose. Love is that which 
we would fall into ourselves just as your ribs would support you, would not support you. If you, if you did not have ribs, your heart would fall into you. You would collapse. But love is the rib of destiny. What do I mean? I mean that Jesus had to have a support system and it was based upon the love dynamic. And when he went about doing good, he went about doing it because he had the structure of love that galvanized and vitalized his vision, that mobilized his mission, that undergirded this understanding. He was a unique presence in the life because he did not shrink, he did not flinch. He went out and embraced all of humanity because he had enough love to handle the situation. Tell your neighbor, I need some love today. Not money, not sex, not power, not glamour, but I need some love. I want some real love. I want the real deal. I don't want you messing around. I want love that will lift and elevate and motivate and rejuvenate and resuscitate. I want love. Do you want love today? Oh, I want love. I don't want a part-time love. I don't want a split shift love, but I want love that will give you a new appreciation of your worth and of your essence. And so we talk about heritage. It's all about going about doing good. Did you not understand? Do you not believe that love that mobilizes is what our historicity is all about? Do you not understand that the Harriet Tubman's and the Sojourner Truths and Denmark Visas and Gabriel Prosser's and David Walker's, do you not understand that the love that galvanized them, that made Frederick Douglass risk his life just because he would read, made Harriet Tubman go into the South and bring hundreds back to freedom? Do you not understand it is love? Do you not this sojourn her truth? She told the truth that she sojourned and made her journey. Do you not understand it's all about love today? If it's not love, it's not about anything. If it's not love, you cannot rejuvenate your life. It is love that God defines in that reality more than anything else. And Jesus us is love and God is love and I want you during this African American History Month during this Heritage Sunday to believe that because God is love you can do anything you want to do because God is love you're not intimidated because God is love he walks with you and he talks with you and he tells you that I am your own because we have love today and in a real sense I thought about about this business of going about doing good. You know, when I was coming up, I came up in a place called Lovejoy, Illinois, around East St. Louis. And I came up where people would do day work, domestic work. And sometimes folk got up before sunlight and they would go way out to St. Louis County and they would be in the white folks' houses. Well, yeah, I can say that. Uh, they, they'd be in the white folks' houses and they'd be working from sun up to sundown. They left before it was daylight and they came after back when the sun was down. Why? Because they had love enough for family. These were the ones who said, I want my children to do so. What did they want? I want my children to do better than I did. I want my children to have better living. I want my to have a foundation for better living. I want my children to have a consciousness of awareness of who I am. And so love is about giving us a foundation for better living. That's all it is. You can call it what you want to. When Johnny Coleman got it, she got it from Jesus. Jesus was all about better living. He wanted you to come from death to life, from brokenness to wholeness, from sadness to gladness, from negation to affirmation from confusion to consistency. Jesus wanted us to have a better life. Don't you want to have a better life? Don't you want to have better living? And Jesus had it, and Jenny wanted some of it, so she got to Jesus' teachings and said, we got this platform, we can find a foundation for better living. And Jesus' foundation is for you that you can live your life better. 
If you're down, he says, if I be lifted up, it's a foundation for better living. If you're lost, I am the shepherd of the sheep. It's a foundation for better living. If you're weak, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. It's a foundation for better living. If you say no, God says you can go. If you doubt, he says you can believe. It is a foundation for better living. Not weak living, not ineffectual living, not puckish living but a powerful, purposeful, better living. I want to live good in the neighborhood. I want to live for the Lord because it is better living today. And so Johnny Coleman had the platform, and I'm here to tell you, that's all they did. That's all Dr. King was about. Oh, you can talk all kinds of ways. You can write books, but he talked about the beloved community, going from chaos to community. He talked about all of the things. Let justice roll down like waters. He talked about the fact of going to the mountaintop. He talked about the fact that he who cannot stand up as it were for something will sit down for everything. <laughs> Dr. King talked about that and it was all about the fact of affirming for us better living. That's all it is. You're better living. When you stop lynching me, that's better living. When you stop violating me, that's better living. When you stop segregation and violation and discrimination, that's better living. When I can stop on the roadside and don't have to stop outside and make the universe a bathroom, that's better living. When I can go into the front door and not the back door, that's better living. When I get equal raises, that's better living. It is better living when I can walk out and not fearful when I get lost in the neighborhood. It's better living. It's better living when a police officer stopped me personally because I was driving a car that he thought maybe I shouldn't have been driving. It's better living when you've got justice. It's better living when you're not afraid of folk. It's better living when you can walk in the newness of life. It's better living when you can run the race with a sense of perseverance. It is better living. Johnny Coleman taught us we need to have a foundational principle for better living. She said, plan your work, work your plan. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? It is a foundation for better living. Believe God today. Get it? Get it? Until the angels sing new songs. Get it? Until the sons of God shout for joy. Get it? with a new power, with a new purpose. Get it today. And so we're all about better living today because that's our heritage. My mama wanted me to do good. Every black mother, every black father, and my grandfather used to say, that's worth the salt that went in his bread. My grandfather, every parent wants their child to do better. Don't you want your children to do better? Don't you want them to do better? Ain't that why you work? That's why you say you got to stay in school. You tell your daughter you can't be hanging out on the corner. Tell them that you can't just call up and folk who ain't going nowhere, who don't have no purpose, who just want to sit down, jaw jacking, hanging on the corner, boys pulling up their crotch, pants below their behind, and they need to pull up their pants and look up, look their mind. Hear me? It's all about a better living. I want to live so God can use me anywhere and anytime. I want to live, C-U-T, better living. That's what Johnny said, Christ, universal temple, a foundation for better living. Put the word together, C-U-T, it means cut. And you ought to be a cut above, a cut above mediocrity, a cut above negation, a cut above I can't, a cut above fear, a cut above anxiety, a cut above degradation, a cut above, you ought to be a cut above. A cut above. Be a cut above pot. Don't be ordinary. Be extraordinary. Don't just be just commonplace. Be consequential. Don't be usual. Be unique. In other words, be a cut above, C-U-T. Love feet with passion. Be a cut above. I'm a cut above. What you doing, Jesus? I'm a cut above. Because you hate me, but I love you. You talk about me, I lift you up. You pray on me, I pray for you. You hate me, I relate to you. In other words, I am a cut above. 
Johnny! Leave here. Leave me. Thank you, Johnny, for telling me. Hardy Henry, you can do this. You can do it. You are cut above. Don't let people define you. Don't let their smallness encapsulate you. But recognize the ambience of the universe is yours. Henry, do what you want to do. Take your big flat feet of faith and put them in the path of progress and becoming and walk your walk and talk your talk. You can do this thing. You are a cut above. A cut above. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. High five your neighbor. Say, Johnny, you got it right. Oh, yeah. A cut above. A cut above. Oh, I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. This whole love dynamic, this whole heritage thing, it's more than just going through the hallways looking at pictures once a month, but love dynamic is about being a cut above every day. Don't just deal with this as some kind of uh, as some kind of event. Our problem, dear beloved, is that we look at life as an event. Life is not an event. Life is an experience. You've got to experience each day with power, with purpose, with possibility. And so every day is an opportunity for you to do the best and be the best and leave the other stuff. Deal with stress and the rest because God is for you. He is a cut above. And if you've got a life, devoid of love, devoid of the teachings that Jenny talked about, that Jesus brought her. If you have a life that's devoid of that, then you like sun and you ain't got no energy. You like the moon without radiance. You like grass without chlorophyll. You meat without protein. You, you milk without calcium. You a song without melody. If you got a tongue that cannot talk, and eyes that cannot see, and ears that cannot hear, something is missing in your life. You are not playing without wings. If you got life without love, life without love is trying to find a black cat in a dark room at midnight, and you. I'm talking. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm saying today that God wants us to love one another. God wants us to embrace and not disgrace. He wants us to have grace for the race. God wants us, dearly beloved, to be, no, violate, but to venerate. And so I'm here to tell you then, it's all about what kind of love are you talking about? Is it that same old pedestrian pablum that they put out on TV? Is it your soap operas as the world turns and the brighter day and the rolling beautiful? I'm all up in General Hospital because I wasn't brave and bold and all that stuff. What is it? Is it something more than that? Is it more than scandal? What is it? It's a scandal that you don't understand the scandal of the cross. And that's what happened on Calvary. It's a scandal that you're not aware. So let me say, as I see the brothers getting to the piano, let, let me say, let me say. Let me say, it is all about, it's about growing and glowing and, and sowing and getting more. Let me tell you, dearly beloved, that's what love is. But let me give you three forms of love, three iterations of what love is. What it is, what it is. First thing is that love is not superficial. It ain't superficial. Ladies, love is not superficial. If the brother tells you, baby, I love you so much. I love you, I'll do anything, I'll swim the ocean, I'll fight lions with the switch, I'll do all of that for you. But at the end, he said, when you coming over, baby, he said, I'll be over Saturday night if it doesn't rain, that superficial stuff. <laughs> it's superficial. Superficial. It has no vitality, it's superficial. And superficial stuff is shallow stuff. 
You don't want to operate in a shallow dimension. That's superficial. You've got to move way out. You can't be superficial. Jesus said one day about a man who was rich. He was young. He was a ruler. He had a trifecta going. He was rich. He was young. He was a ruler. And yet Jesus said to him, you want to do something? Give up what you got. But this brother could not. He said, oh, you don't understand, man. I'm at the, I'm at the country club. I'm head of the chamber of commerce, and I cannot do this. And Jesus walked away sad because he understood something, that the brother did not really get this thing. The brother was caught up on superficiality. You've got to move beyond window, the superficiality of life. Don't just be superficial official but recognize you have been called to the kingdom for more than this you're not a superficial christian superficiality does not have any power any potentiality any vitality any reality you must move beyond the superficial in your life i don't want to be superficial i don't want a superficial doctor operating on me i don't want a superficial teacher teaching my children I don't want a superficial cook in the room, in, in the kitchen, because she may confuse paprika with something else. I don't want superficiality festooning me. I don't want anything that's superficial, artificial. I don't want a zircon when there is a diamond. Why do I want a pickup truck when there is a Rolls Royce? I don't want to be superficial. I want the best that God has for me. So get away, superficiality. Don't let it infect you. It will contaminate your spirit. Do not be contaminated with error consciousness. And error consciousness is superficiality. Hear me. Not only that. Not only must I deal with the superficial, but I'm here to tell you also, you need to deal with the sacrificial. Now, that's what love is. Tell your neighbor, sacrificial. See, that's the essence of Lent. That's why you're up in here. That's why you do all this stuff. I don't mean just because you, well, I, I, I'm not going uh, to eat that, that meat today. I'm, I'm going to give up my six-pack. I'm, uh, I'm not going to do all that today. I'm going to forego. If you can do it for 40 days, baby, you can do it forever. Don't get caught up in this superficial relationship. It is a sacrificial sensibility. It is sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to greatness. Superficiality leads to that which will incarcerate you in the cellular contentiousness of folly. You must move beyond superficial and embrace the sacrificial. What do you mean? That's what Jesus was all about. That's what he came. He came touching in tenderness. It's all about being sacrificial today. It is Isaiah's notion of what he called the suffering servant. He says he was wounded. He was bruised. He was chastised. It is the suffering servant. And I'm going to tell you, you've got to have the sensibility of a sacrificial consciousness. That's what you want to do. And all this week, oh, you get quiet on me now. But, but, but you got to know when you go out of here that this week you got to sacrifice something. It ain't enough to sit here and look pretty and you look good. Not enough to be in the CU team talking about Johnny. You've got to ascend to another level. This is a sacrificial spirituality. That's what I'm talking about. In other words, it's like going crazy. You got to go crazy. See, it's sacrificial. I know it's crazy. Because Jesus said something crazy. Jesus said, you need to love others as I have loved you. How in the world? Come on, Jesus. Really? Really? Are you serious? Get real. How am I going to love somebody like you? You're the son of God. You walk on water. You feed 5,000 folk. You bring bread out of the sky. Jesus loved folk. What do you mean? Lay down my life? For my, oh, come on now. <laughs> Lay down my life? No! But Jesus is not talking about physicality. He means spirituality. Lay down your best. Give up your stuff for somebody else. It ain't got to be grandiloquent. It's simple that somebody ahead a 
well. You're ahead of somebody and an older sister or brother, and you get out of line and give them your place in line. That's sacrifice. Sacrificial sensibility. Finally this. Not only must it be a sacrificial sensibility, but also it must be beneficial. What do you mean? It must be beneficial. Because God doesn't want us just to sacrifice you know, for others only. But God wants us also to recognize that we don't have to worry about it. See, see you can't work if you're worried about getting a reward. There are too many people who can't do anything because they got their hand out. Too many people are looking for something, and that is to have this quid pro quo mentality. But I want you to understand that Jesus says, you don't have to look for this thing. All you've got to do is do what I tell you to do, and eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God has in store for you. So C-U-T today, I want you to know that God has something for you. He's got a benefit package. Oh, I know. I know your boss. I know industry. I know the one percenters. They don't want you to have a benefit packet. They take everything. But hear me today. Jesus is not talking about a benefit packet that you got on the market. He's not talking about what your Dow Jones. He's not talking about your stocks, your debentures, your securities. He's not talking about that. What he's talking about is the fact that when you lay down your life, when you sacrifice, and because God will not allow us to be better to him than he'll beat us. Hear me. God says, I give you a benefit package. What is it? It's a package that says, little beloved, that I got you. It's a package that says, don't worry about it. You ain't got the fear. It's a package that says, don't be scared. Fight the fright. Tell your neighbor, fight the fright. Whatever it is, fight the fright. Lift your sight. Quit looking at the mud puddle. Look up and see the rainbow. Fight the fright. Lift your sight. Inhabit the light. Hear me today. So it is. So it is. That Jesus is saying, this crazy love, this passionate love, this driven love. He says, I will give you a benefit package and you ain't got to worry about it because believe God, God's got whatever you need. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. So don't worry about your benefit. God's got it. He'll give it to you. Press down and shake it together and run it over. As I go to my seat, you start playing now. Give me some. Give me some soft music. As I move out of this, give me some soft music. I want you to know today. And I'm getting in my, my other kind of voice now, ladies. This is Valentine aftermath. I want. I want you to understand today that if you have love, love will touch you in the deep places of your spirit. Love is that which gives you to know that when you got up this morning, you had possibility in front of you. Love is saying, I'm there when the storm is coming, I'm a shelter. Love is saying today, and when other folk run away, I'm going to run to you. When they talk about you, I'm going to talk you up. When they want to kill, I want to heal. They want to lie, I want to be able to vie. I, I want you to know this is love today. And so love is to know that God has a package for you. This week, know that God's got a package. That he's Jehovah Jireh. And the Lord will provide. He's got a package. I'll provide for you, Abraham. He'll, he'll provide. You don't need a dagger on a mountain, but God will provide. He'll provide whatever you need. God, and so he's got a package of Jehovah Jireh. He's got a package of Jehovah Shammah. For the Lord is present. Tell your neighbor, he's present with me. 
when you're driving down the highway and somebody want to give you the finger and somebody want to cut you off, but I want you, he's Jehovah Shama. The Lord is there. He's with you. Angels all around me. Reverend Clevin says all night and all day. The angels. Keep watching. I'm talking about Jehovah Shama. That's a benefit package, y'all. I'm talking about Jehovah Rohi. I'm talking about he who is my shepherd as the sheep of the pasture. He is the good shepherd. And when I go through the dark defile, don't worry about it because my God's got me. The benefit is going to take me into the fold and embrace me and goodness and mercy. The shepherd dogs of sensibility will follow me all the days of my life. I'm talking about God's got me. Talking about God's got me. Benefit package. You got one. Don't let folk put you down. I don't care what they say about you. Johnny says, so what? So what? They say. Who cares what they say? Do you know whom you trust? So believe today. I want you as I go to my seat to believe this. That my God is saying that all of us here at CUT, that we got this thing, we got this thing, we got this thing, for we are Dr. King, we are Denmark, we are Harriet, we are Rosa Parks, we are David Walker, we are Matt Turner, we got this thing. Believe it, believe it, believe it. We got live your heritage, love your heritage, ignite your heritage. We are the people of God, and we got this thing, the power of love, the power of heritage. I receive it from history. I can make it alive in the present moment.